Chased by the deep state, fighting for independence, thinking about revolution, looking for alternative solutions. The enemies of the deep state will tell you what others even don't dare to think. Manuel Oxenreiter and Mateusz Piskorski. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the next edition of the geopolitical podcast Die Guten Menschen, Public Enemies of the Deep State. My name is Manuel Ochsenreiter. I'm editor-in-chief of the German news magazine Zuerst. And um, as usual and as always, on the other side is my friend and colleague Mateusz Piskorski from Poland. Hello, Mateusz. Yes, on the other on the other side, uh, physically, but I hope that uh, ideologically and mentally on the same side. That is what we are going to find out today. Yes, that's an interesting question. Yes, because today we are talking about the recent events, not just in the United States of America, but also in Europe. Very first question, Mateusz, how many Black Lives Matter protests took place in Poland in the last days? Well, just a <laughs> small protest of about 20 or 50 people there on the streets I, of Warsaw. I, I think, I think in, East, more. I think in I, Eastern Europe it is, it is not handled as hot as it is handled in uh, Western Europe and the United States, right? Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, in Berlin, by the way, in Germany, there were a lot of protests even one month ago, as yes. far as I remember, yes. right? Tens of thousands of people are protesting in Germany in different cities. Um, what is interesting, uh, because to the corona regulations, the, the police was very, very hard uh, with the protests before when it came to protests against the corona regulations. But now, since uh, all these Black Lives Matter protests take part in Germany and in the rest of at least Western Europe, um, I think there is nothing to see anymore about uh, face masks, about uh, social distancing. So they simply let it go. But I think that is not now precisely the topic. The topic is what, what, what are we seeing there? Hello? Are you still here? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. I can hear you. Okay. But what are what 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 are we seeing there? Is this a protest movement? Is it revolutionary, like they say themselves? Is it a uh, protest against um, against race discrimination? Is there something oh, like uh, race discrimination in Europe? Can we compare oh. Europe with US? These are all the questions which are open right now. I mean, when it comes to, to Europe, the situation is completely different, I think, yes, and uh, we have just some echoes of uh, the American situation now. When it comes to United States, I would, I would rather call it a kind of uh, uprising or a potential uprising, yes, because it's not, well, it's not a revolution, because revolution usually has its uh, ideology or at least a few points of a program, yes, of a political program, a political strategy and so on. And uh, in case of U.S., as we see, it's quite uh, chaotic. And uh, on the one hand, you have all those uh, racial aspects. On the other hand, you have all those uh, social aspects. And uh, uh, actually, no one is able to articulate the aims of the protest. Yes? Yes. That uh, is... I mean, this, this is my, my impression there. Uh, that's why, uh, well, I guess it's something new. Yes? People mm. went out on the streets and they actually demand nothing, yes, because, uh, or perhaps they demand something, but, but they cannot articulate it because they are without any structure, without any leaders and so on, and without any political ideology, political agenda even, yes? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what I believe somehow is that there is a very, very uh, widespread sentiment in the United States there is a discontent uh, with injustice, to say it as general as possible. And part of this injustice is, of course, I mean, if you see the statistics of police brutality, not just against blacks, against simply anyone who is not wearing a police uniform, if you see... Um, the, the huge gap between rich and poor. If you follow the debates, I mean, I speak now as a German and we have a very well-developed social security system, but uh, I mean, you know, the <laughs> some Americans, when you, when you propose such a thing like a public health insurance, who call you a communist because of that. So, um, uh, is this protest movement also the embodiment of this discontent? This is maybe the question, so that, that 
people have enough from from that kind of situation they are losing their houses when they are uh, going to, <laughs> to a hospital for a longer time or have a, a complicated treatment because they they get out of the hospital in, in deep depths for example i mean that is just one aspect of of many what do you think is this what puts the people on the street also this this feeling of discontent with um, the society system they live in well if you if you look at the statistics when it comes to unemployment <clears throat> i think that uh, there was no other country in the history not only not only of the western world let's say but uh, all over the world there was no such a country which would so rapidly, so um, fast uh, lose so many millions of uh, jobs there, yes? Yeah. So, uh, well, this is a completely new situation, yes? And, uh, of course, we have in, in European countries, I mean in most of the European countries, uh, we have a kind of, uh, let's say, um, safe reserve, yes, of mm -hmm. social policy instruments and so on for, for the people losing their jobs. And uh, as you have mentioned, U.S. is a country without any kind of social policy. Uh, U.S. is a kind of social Darwinist country. I mean, it's uh, when it comes to its economic model, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, that's exactly why the the, the people are, are are getting out on the streets. The people are trying to, well, let's say they are they are trying to voice something. Or, but at the moment, for the moment being, I, I have an impression that they that they rather mm, voice uh, their rejection of all political lights, of the whole political system, and of the whole country, by the way, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, of, of, the, of the model of, um, of statehood and the economy of the United States. But they are unable for the moment being to uh, organize themselves uh, to such a degree as it as it was a few months ago with uh, yellow vests in France. Yeah, the, uh, yellow vests. Yes, you you notice that they were able to to formulate and to um, articulate some uh, ideas. And, I mean, they uh, had a they had a manifesto somewhere some after some weeks of of protests. Yes, yes, of course. But they were but they were discussing the manifestos. Yes, I mean uh, they have a good organization. That's also a big difference between the political culture. Let's say of the Europeans, in this case the French, and uh, the Americans. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Americans are uh, not so, let's say, capable of political thinking as the Europeans are still, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, that's of, of course, it has several reasons, and but they are not going to, 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 to offend the level of education <laughs> in, in the US now, or to insult we, 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 do this next, we do this next time again. Yes, <laughs> that would be a good pleasure for, for yeah. me and for you, uh, yes. I guess, too. But anyway, in, uh, the protest is something like, you know, it's uh, blind, furious, and, uh, and so on, in my opinion. But uh, uh, nevertheless, I, I guess that in some time, um, maybe some leaders would appear, and they would give it a shape, a political shape. Uh, but not now, yes. Mm -hmm. Still, um, uh, yeah. Because you are we are going to the topic of 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 uh, and the relations between uh, race and uh, and uh, class and social struggle there. Yes, you know what, what impression I I have last days. I have a, an impression that uh, uh, it is the mainstream, it is the system, the U.S. system, which is trying to present all this uh, protest and all this situation, all this uprising, as some call it, yes, mm -hmm. as a part of uh, race struggle and discrimination of mm -hmm. uh, of the blacks, yes, and of the colors there. I mean, it would be very, very comfortable for them, for the system, to reduce the significance of the whole process, uh, protest uh, to the race uh, issues, yes? Uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. No, I totally agree, because uh, you can then pamper a little bit your racial minorities, and then you say, look, the situation is okay again without changing the system. But you didn't change anything when it when it comes to the relation of poverty and uh, and and uh, to to rich people. You you are um, not stopping your uh, disastrous foreign policy of military interventions, which are totally. 
totally expensive and and so on of course no i totally agree i think that the racial explanation is much more convenient and comfortable for washington than the social the class convenient uh, yes the class organizing organizing you know they are inspiring i think the system now is inspiring all these humiliating uh, shows like uh, kissing the boots the shoes yes. of Uh, the blacks by the whites and so on yes so it makes all the uh, idea of this uh, protest ridiculous and even irritating yeah. for some of the whites which would otherwise protest and it makes protest there yes? and it, 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 it makes the bible belt upset of course seeing these pictures yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, and, and the and hillbillies the, yeah. well, i think i think that let's say the white uh, people from the white militias Uh, from the Rust Belt and so on, yeah. yes, <laughs> they would be equally ready and they have equal reasons to protest. Yeah, because uh, they are also <laughs> they, they, they are also not rich people. Yes, exactly. Yes, they are out of the system as well. Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, I mean, and and also, uh, you know, the system is trying to appease uh, the uh, black population of 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 uh, US uh, in a very very. Um, arrogant way I would say mm -hmm. because uh, look instead of giving them something yes I mean in terms of social policy and mm -hmm. so on yes uh, they kiss their boots I yes. mean they they, they, <laughs> they uh, ask people to kiss their boots and so on and to knee on, on, on their knees and to apologize and so on you know the blacks are furious from since the 19th century in the US I think because Uh, after the, the uh, American Civil War then, in 1864, Abraham Lincoln uh, declared that every uh, African citizen uh, of uh, uh, America will get 40 acres of uh, land and uh, one mule, mm -hmm. just cultivate, cultivate the land, yes, uh, and they, did, did, they got nothing. Mm -hmm. that, yes? So it was since Abraham Lincoln that Uh, in economical terms, they get nothing. In symbolic terms, yes, uh, they get. Uh, I mean, instead of uh, getting something to eat, a, they 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 got the uh, another wave of political correctness. Yeah, yeah. The, they won't become uh, ver uh, well better better off when it comes to the social terms they live in and so on uh, by the fact that someone will uh, apologize them. Yes, yeah. I mean that some ordinary white people will apologize them. And this is what the system does, I think. I mean, the system is trying to uh, pervert all the idea of the protest from the um, class one to the race one. Mm -hmm. that, that, brings us, that, that brings us to the next point. I, I cannot uh, recollect uh, the name of the journalist, but I was reading an interesting comment in one of the bigger American uh, newspapers where a commenter commented this recent conflict as a type of pre-civil war uh, between the two big parties, uh, the Republicans on the one side, who are, let us say, on the side, of course, of Trump and, and uh, the police and the police state and the, in defense of the police, and on the other side, these social justice movements, uh, also like uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, on the side of the Democratic Party, but I think that both parties have no interest at all to change the political system because it would go automatically along with the loss of influence, power, and of course also uh, economic assets. What are you thinking? I think it's a misleading, uh, generally a misleading explanation. It is an explanation which is wishful thinking maybe, but it is not picturing the real reality. It can, if they manage now to orchestrate this in this direction, as you said already, to do a little bit stupid symbolism on the one side without changing the big things, um, um, then it can be interpreted in, uh, in, in future his history books like that. But I don't think that it hits the core. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, for the moment being, the protests are, of course, used and abused by um, both political parties uh, because of the upcoming uh, presidential elections, of course. And uh, what was really astonishing is that uh, at a certain moment, even Joe Biden, which is, which is let's say, a kind of embodiment of uh, the things the people there on the streets are protesting against, I mean, of the, um, the oligarchy, of the neoliberals there, of the corporations, corporate interests, and so on, uh, he somehow... Uh, 
softly but uh, but supported the the protesting people yes mm. uh, which was uh, really something uh, like a shock for me and uh, of course if you look at their political system i mean both both political parties are creating uh, are creating a part of the system a part of the system and are trying to legitimize the system the problem of the us is that they have no political uh, forces which would uh, create a real alternative. Uh, I think that this, perhaps this is a, a kind of opportunity to uh, create such political forces uh, because uh, uh, sooner or later, yes, the Americans will need a candidate. You remember uh, some time ago there, there were some populist candidates, for instance, yes, which were standing against the Rep Republicans and against the Democrats. And uh, they were trying to be somewhere between, like Ross Perot mm -hmm. in the 90s, I think. But of course, Ross Perot was also part of the system. I mean, he was a, a billionaire, a <laughs> yeah, b b yes. business tycoon and so on, yes? Yeah, yeah. So he was just playing in politics. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, this time... Uh, we cannot exclude a, an option that uh, we will have some new political uh, leaders or leaders of the social movement. Uh, the condition is that the system won't manage to uh, present all, all the protests or all the uprisings and so on uh, in uh, racial terms. This is the first condition, I think. And the second condition is that uh, the system won't be able to um, invigilate and uh, control from within all the uh, protesters there, yes, because this is also a huge danger. I mean, I, I was I was quite uh, shocked when I read the news that, uh, for instance, uh, Apple Corporation is now cooperating with all the governmental agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, you know, to trace the protesters using uh, using iPhones and so on. Yes? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so this is a pure example of what the U.S. state now is. Yes, it is a kind of uh, synthesis. Yes, uh, of uh, corporate interests and uh, police state. Yes, I would I would call it like that. So uh, this is a definition of of United States, which is not a an ordinary country, an ordinary state. But which is a tool and instrument of uh, uh, big corporations, uh, uh, let's say political representation of, of big capital. Yes. What is what is also quite interesting because you mentioned that is that uh, the big multi-international uh, corporate sector is playing there on both sides. <laughs> what is what uh, and and I always ask myself, um, aren't the people there, I mean, you, you read it often in Europe, in the com comments and in the analysis, but I don't read it so often when it comes to the U.S. themselves. So you, you uh, right now, you gave the good example about tracking the phones. What you, you need, of course, for this big corporation on the, on the other side. Corporations such as Netflix, I think also Amazon and so on, they all express their sympathies for the protest movement. So you have them really playing on both sides. And I think myself, can, can you really call for, um, for an uprising or for a change of the system while being in an alliance with uh, such huge corporates? Yes, this is the this is the issue. Yes, you 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 cannot because the corporations are the main part, and uh, I would say, I yeah. uh, are a pivotal part of, of the whole system. Yes, yeah, and yeah, they are the benefiters, and they have and exactly they have an interest again to put it on the race level, all the thing because yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> because it is, it is much more easy. That's why uh, we see all those actions like uh, you know with apologizes and so on, mm -hmm. uh, mainly in the. In the social media, yes, which are controlled by by the corporations, and in the uh, in the big establishment media there as well, yes. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, if the new uh, if the new approach of CNN uh, will uh, change something uh, among ordinary people in the U.S. Because I remember that uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, outraged people in Atlanta uh, demolished the the office of CNN, yes. Mm -hmm. Not because they are pro-Trump and that they hate CNN <laughs> as, as, as Trump, Trump yeah. hates, yes? but just because they 
uh, associate uh, CNN, they perceive CNN as part of the system, yes? Yeah, which, is, yeah. which is quite true, yes? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. It's also, there is also the Lügenpresse sentiment. I think it's very present yeah. there. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. So, so, I mean, this, this is a uh, movement which uh, really draws a big hope when it comes to, to, to the future of, of United States. Uh, I mean, a first such uh, protest, I think, um, since uh, well, since even even during the times of the of the of the crisis, yes, mm. in uh, in the twenties, thirties, uh, I don't think there was so, so so big protest at that time like this one. Uh, you you are much no no I'm older than you, but I don't remember. <laughs> so I was, I was about to say no, but uh, but of course I mean there were there, there were some protest movements, but I think they were not calling for such fundamental or it was not necessary to do such fundamental changes there was then some when the new deal and so on but that was also not i mean let us be honest that was not really a change of the system it was a little reparation it, little little was, cosmetic little cosmetic correction of of some it uh, was a, exactly it was, it was a kind of reformism in, in yes the exactly uh, we, we had it in in europe after after the, the second world war when yeah. it comes well, you know, well, that, Welfare we, state, the social democrats, the Christian democrats, and so on. Yeah? Oh, we have it in Germany after all the wars we we uh, we had. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, but it of course it is it is it is it is not this uh, great uh, economic revolution like the Americans or the official America is today picturing the the New Deal. Huh? This is but, you know, they, important they, to understand. They uh, had they had uh, they used to have a. Uh, uh, political uh, repre re possible potential re political representation when it comes to the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just to like to remind you that some months ago there was a candidate, Bernie Sanders. Yes. 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 And uh, in 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 American terms, in U.S. terms, he was like a far left or, mm -hmm. or socialist, green socialist, yeah. and so on. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he what he did, you remember, he he resigned and he supported Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which and deprived the the the, the whole anti-system left and so on of mm. uh, any hopes. And um, I I mean. That is that is maybe the last important aspect. We spoke now a lot about the events in U.S. And I think it is even not worth that we speak now a lot about the events in Europe. Um, I think the difference to U.S. is that what we see now in Europe, these protests uh, in, in solidarity with U.S., is, is more like all these fashionable uh, protests, what we have, especially in Germany. I mean, I don't have to uh, remember that uh, when Barack Obama was running for U.S. presidency as a candidate, he came to Berlin. And there were also thousands of people cheering up and um, uh, and celebrating. I think that there is a fundamental difference between these protests, what we have in Europe and what what is taking place in U.S. But let us talk about because that is, um, I think, very important, it, and it will be also important for Europe. What will happen if Joe Biden manages to get to take advantage of this movement? What will happen if Joe Biden manages in November to get elected as president? Will then be all the guys protesting now in Europe, and of course also the guys protesting in the U.S., be confident when it comes? I don't think so. What do you think? Well, I totally agree with you, but this is another topic. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the question here, uh, when it comes to to us, to, to, to Europe, to Eurasia even, yes, uh, is the question about the future of this uh, uprising of, or, yeah. or of this protest. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, it might be quite... Uh, harmful for 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 the Americans and for, for their future as a, as a single country yes but on the other hand it might be another chance that uh, some of the people in Europe will see that uh, the model the social model the economic model of uh, US is non-effective mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps this will stimulate some people in Europe in European countries to change their models from the neoliberal one Mm -hmm. which they seem to prefer now, mm -hmm. uh, to a more, let's say, continental European one. So more state-oriented and so on. Uh, this is uh, this might be one of the positive aspects of, of the whole mm -hmm. situation there. 
uh, well, uh, and if you listen to, to Professor Alexander Dugin, he has lately claimed that uh, uh, perhaps uh, all those uprisings and protests will bring down the U.S. as a country, as an imperial power. And as a result, uh, we'll have a first opportunity since uh, the Second World War to think about our freedom ourselves, yes? And what is quite necessary to do so? And I, optimistic, optimistic. Optimistic as well, but I... I, I don't know if, 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 if it's not too optimistic, but anyway... But since I'm German, I'm, I'm always thinking uh, in the darkest colors, and I'm always pessimistic, as we know. So um, I, what, what, what I wanted to say in a nutshell, if these protests if, and if these events will be the last push someone like John Biden will need to move into the White House as next U.S. president, from that moment on, from the German or the U.S. American air base in Rammstein and from Sicily and from U.S. aircraft carriers in the Arabian Gulf and in the Mediterranean will start every day the bombers and put down <laughs> and put, put it down in Arab countries and all over the world. I think uh, that sounds maybe now ironic. Uh, if John Biden will become president, if he will become president, because of now these these protests give him a lot of wind in his in his sails, um, then uh, if we just look uh, on the U.S. aggression and not the aggression on Twitter or the aggression uh, what someone said in a press conference in in Washington, but if we measure aggression with um, the number and the weight of bombs, then. The Trump uh, area might seem like a peace area, uh, like 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 a peace epoch. What 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 do you think? I, yes, I agree. But uh, uh, this is the matter of of something else. I think this mm -hmm. is the matter of of the level of control uh, when it comes to the level of control of the president by, uh, let's say, those circles which are the real decision makers in the United States. And, and this is not uh, uh, Donald Trump, which some, sometimes sometimes he he, he was the uh, one of the very few American presidents who tried to oppose those decision makers from the deep state. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, for instance, the Russians ask, and it's quite well motivated. Well, what uh, what has he done, for instance, to 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 improve the relations with Russia? Yes, nothing. Of course, one one might say that that's because of the accusations by the campaign against him of the Democrats and so on and so on. But I mean, when it when it comes to effects, when it comes to results, mm -hmm. I can also tell you as a citizen of Poland, yes, that it was the Trump administration which finally decided to locate uh, U.S. military bases in my country. Yes, I, I agree with you that that he hasn't started any war. Mm -hmm. any war this is true, of course. Uh, but on the other hand. The militaristic imperialist policy of U.S. is continued. Yeah, it's not continued by him personally. So I don't think there will be a big difference between a, a Republican or and a Democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there there would be some uh, differences, perhaps, when it comes to uh, their um, let's say uh, justifications, public justifications of their aggressive policy. Uh, let's say mm -hmm. the, the Democrats would be more anti-Russian than Trump is, for instance, mm -hmm. yes, uh, I suppose. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they would be, let's say, less, uh, at least in the when it comes to their rhetorics, less uh, anti-Chinese. Absolutely, yes. yes uh, but, on, but, on the, but on the other hand, uh, well, uh, Joe Biden, by the way, you have mentioned him, he's a good symbol because as far as I know and as far as I read the American media, uh, he is uh, practically in such uh, physical and mental condition that he would either resign after being elected mm -hmm. and give a place to a vice president he he, he will get, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, either he would be a total puppet without uh, any potential decision-making because uh, 
I have I have read that he is really really ill and uh, uh, well even concerning his age he he is not a young man so so anyway he, and he is not uh, uh, in the condition of uh, Mahathir Mohamad from Malaysia who became prime minister when he was 92 yes <laughs> <laughs> or like Konrad Adenauer in Germany yes oh. <laughs> no 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 so <laughs> so, so uh, that is by the way uh, somehow a beautiful a beautiful end uh, we, we we come to the end of our podcast a beautiful end you were describing <laughs> Joe Biden's um, health um, uh, health situation in a way uh, that we just missed the term hopefully <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. We we, we wish uh, we wish Joe, we wish him the best. We wish him uh, the best. All the best. Uh, Two hundred years, but not on the post of U.S. Uh, president. He's in all. He's present in all our prayers. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I know. Uh, but to put it to an end, I mean, there are. Uh, there are perspectives, there are uh, opportunities and possibilities that what it is happening now in U.S. will lead to what we call the de-Americanization of Europe. You uh, quoted and mentioned uh, Professor Alexander Dugin, who is expressing this hope, and despite I am uh, a pessimistic German, I have also this hope that it will, that it will lead in this direction, although I am almost sure that what is happening right now will be far not enough for this, but it could be a good start. What do you think? Well, just just for a start, perhaps yes. But at the moment, being we have uh, uh, another, uh, let's say, military operations like uh, you know the maneuvers, the trainings, uh, huge trainings of U.S. troops in in the Baltic, for instance, and uh, we have other militaristic tendencies. Uh, well, uh, I think that the American system could collapse somehow if uh, um, some, uh, let's say, power sector like uh, the army or the police or the services would uh, uh, join the protesters, yes? Absolutely. But as, far, as far as I know, it's not possible at the moment mm. being. I mean, maybe some policemen, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they have not a very good PR now there, yes, among the protesting people. <laughs> no. By the way, I, I really, if you compare the, the um, policemen there, yes, yeah. and the policemen and the reactions of the police in the European countries, uh, you see why we can call uh, Americans... Uh, barbarians. Yes, they they look all like Robocop, you know. <laughs> when when, when well, I, see. I I mean, you know, I mean, their reactions. I have just seen yes. some some uh, some short movies that they like. You know, they were uh, running after two women somewhere in the street, yeah. uh, around fifteen policemen, and then they were beating uh, all those two two women. Yes, without yeah. any arms and and anything. Yes, uh, so I I thought they were dead even. Yes. Yeah. They were, no, they have. They have really. Wh wherever you, this is. This is, by the way, uh, maybe one really important point. Wherever you stand politically, if you are far left, if you are far right, if you are a liberal, but I think if you, if you are a reasonable person in Europe, there is nothing getting around to the fact that you see the fact that the U.S. has a problem with police brutality. However, you want to interpret it, but they have a problem with it, and, and I think that is important to know. If you just compare the statistics of people killed by police, uh, if you compare the United States with any European country, whoever is governing there, if these are conservative yes. socialists, mm -hmm. there is no comparison. This gap is so huge that you cannot even explain it somehow um, in a in a reasonable way. You just see no, you, they have you, a serious you, problem. Yeah, you know, you you you, you can explain that. I I mean, yes. there is a kind of uh, cultural uh, difference. It's a, it's a kind of different civilization which can, which uh, which which is based on more social social Darwinism and on exactly a, aggression brutality. Yeah. Now, what what I meant, you cannot explain it uh, by saying, oh yes, they are maybe a little bit more conservative or a little bit more no. this or a little bit more that. But it is really it is, um, it a, is a civil. You, you have to explain it on the level of civilization. You know, not not. <laughs> it, it, it's not conservatory. Conservatism. It's barbarism. Absolutely. Yes. Think. It is. Uh, 
it's a different civilization if you if you Definitely look at it. Yes, it's it's completely is, non-European civilization. Yeah, exactly. This is what I what I meant. It has absolutely nothing to do with us, even in the worst conditions in Europe. Yeah, so yes, that, exactly. that these things that these things happen. I think it's a good end now for our podcast to know to, to say this is a thing we don't want to have here simply, and um, it is maybe one of the most disgusting sides of the United States of America they show us more disgusting than McDonald's absolutely that's why we want to get rid of them from Europe this program was presented to you by Manuel Oxenreiter and Mateusz Piskorski the hardest dissident who won't violate any time the global rules against racism extremism or any other bad isms <laughs>